All right, so your candle business is booming. Is it time to open your own brick and mortar store? Hello everyone, I'm Jeff Stanley with Stanley Handcrafted, and today I wanted to talk about opening your own store and deciding if it's the right time to do that. Now, 2023 may not have been the greatest year for me, but it was a good year for others, which of course leads us into 2024, and a lot of candle makers are looking to open the store or open their own brick and mortar for the very first time. Now, I get this question quite a bit, and I talk to a lot of people about opening a store, so I figured I would make a video on this one, especially since I've gotten this question a lot, actually, within the last couple weeks. So I wanted to talk about some of the pros and cons about opening a store, and when should you open a store? At what point in your candle making journey should you transition from your house or whatever you're doing as a hobby and move that into a brick and mortar, open your own store. And of course, jumping into this one, this is my own personal opinions on this one. Uh, I'm only going off of what I know, which is in the grand scheme of things, very basic, very limited information, limited knowledge. Uh, I have opened my own brick and mortar store, so I'll talk a little bit about that one. Uh, some of the things that I know to look out for now since I have opened and now closed a brick and mortar. But first, the main question is at what point in your candle making journey do you recognize or do you know that it's a good time to open your own store? And there really is no easy answer for this one. Everybody's journey is going to be different. Uh, but for me, and anytime somebody asks me this question, the first thing I ask them is, how much are you making for one? How busy are you now? And how busy are you going to continue to be down the road? Now, a lot of people outgrow their current spaces, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you need to get a bigger space or open your own brick and mortar, because along with needing a new space like that comes a lot of new responsibilities and a lot of overhead costs that a lot of people just don't think about. So for anybody out there that's looking to get out of their current space, you think you're at the right point in time, I would definitely ask, how much is your current space holding you back? Are you making enough money right now that you could sink that money, half that money, all that money or whatever you've got into a new brick and mortar, into a new location that will turn around and make you that exact same money and more, of course. The other thing that you want to think about is the other thing that you want to think about is how much money are you losing by not getting into a bigger space or not opening your store? Because that's one of the good indicators about getting into your own space or at least getting a larger space is how much is the current space holding you back? If you're making 20, 50, 100 candles a day, if you had more space, could you be making double or triple that? I've run into a lot of candle makers who do a lot of candles and they only do a certain amount. They're only making, let's call it $500 a month, $1,000 a month, $2,000 a month. But if they had a larger space, they could absolutely from day one be making double that because they would just have more space to bring in candles and be able to pour more, set them aside, whereas their current space, they just can't do that. And the reason I ask that question is because a lot of people think that they will get into a space and the money will start to come in. And you definitely don't want to go into a bigger space or a brick and mortar with that kind of mindset. Now, obviously you want that to happen. You're hoping that getting into a bigger space in your own store, you will be bringing in more customers, more money, more opportunities. And if you get the right location, that's absolutely what can can happen or what will happen, but you definitely don't want to bank on that. You want to make sure that your current setup and the candles that you're currently making will cover if you need to pay your own salary on top of whatever it's going to cost for that brick and mortar store. Another easy question that I ask a lot of people is how dependent are you on this money alone to cover your lifestyle, to cover your family, to cover whatever you're doing? A lot of people do this as a side hobby. They might have a partner that works so they can step aside, do this, and the money that they bring in doesn't it's really not necessary to keep the family where it is. And the good thing about that one is it gives you time to get in there and grow. And if you only make $500 in a month because maybe sales dipped, you're going to be OK. And on the other side of that one, if your sales do take a little bit of a dip, that could be a huge blow to what you're bringing in monthly. The other main thing I ask somebody is, are you going to be the person that's working there 24 seven? This is going to make a huge impact on what you can do, how much you can afford and ultimately how much you can bring in, because if you're there, you're the one making the money and you're not paying out extra money for employees that would be there for the time that you're not. 
I would tell this to anybody starting their own store. If you can't be there 100%, and this is one of the downfalls that I had in creating a store is I couldn't be there 100%, which means any profits that I had coming in were then going out to pay somebody else for the hours that I couldn't be there. And the reason I say that is because you as the owner, you know that you can, if it comes to it, you can pay yourself a little bit less week to week. You can absorb some of the peaks and valleys that you're gonna come into that any business comes into. So like I said, if your sales dip for a month, and it's $500 less than it used to be, if you're the only one working there and you can accommodate that, you can definitely absorb that. You can't have an employee absorb the fact that the business took a hit for a month. One of the other things that I would tell somebody getting into this is take a look at the external cost of the store. There are a lot of things that people don't think about, and depending on the type of lease that you get into, you could end up paying uh, fees towards the building, the lot, on top of things like electric, air, internet, and it could very well end up the cheap $1,000 place that you might be getting into might be more like $2,000 a month because of all those additional costs. So definitely do some research on that one. Look at the places that you're getting into. And honestly, I would go around and ask some of the neighboring businesses what they're looking into. Uh, a lot of them will absolutely share uh, if there's building costs, if there's electrical costs, if it's a shared if it's a shared bill throughout the entire building. You can usually get a good idea of what you'll be paying on top of whatever your lease is. And number one is going to be location, location, location. Now everybody says this, and this is one of the things that killed my store, at least the boutique or customer side of things, which is not something we intended to do in the beginning. It was a warehouse and then we opened a store. Uh, but for the store, it was a terrible location. It wasn't a spot, and I've mentioned this in previous videos, it wasn't a destination spot. You had to tell people about it and they had to make a trip to go there. So if you're opening a store, obviously you want there to be traffic already installed. That way the day one you get in there, you've already got people walking by. That's going to make a huge difference in the success of your store. So number one, I would definitely tell somebody to do that. And again, I mentioned this in a previous video, maybe last year or so, go to a place. If you're looking at a spot, go there, spend a full day there, take a picnic lunch. I don't care what you do. Go sit in the parking lot and watch what kind of traffic goes in and out through the entire day. Now, if it's a like a strip mall or something like that, or if it's in uh, like a mall or uh, where a lot of stores are, you already know what the traffic is like. You really don't need to do that. But if it's a place that you're unfamiliar with, definitely stay there for several hours, if not half the day to watch what happens. Because on a busy Saturday, you may get a very different impression of what you thought that place was as opposed to what it actually is. So those are just some quick thoughts. And basically the, the main one comes down to what is your business doing today? Does it justify and does it make the extra money to put into a cheap place or any place to get into at this moment? Now, of course, this is a huge topic, something I could get much more in depth on, but I wanted to make a quick video on this one since a lot of people were asking me. So if you've got any questions or if you actually want a full length video on this one, definitely let me know. And of course hit subscribe on the channel and and we'll see you in the next video.